Welcome everybody to the You Ask, We Podcast, the show where you ask the questions, they answer them, and I'm just the guy in the middle. We're recording today from Brooklyn, New York, and today we have an amazing guest for y'all. He's a DJ from Brooklyn, right here in New York. Uh, he's open for people like Uno the Activist, Sid Shine, Nissen Black, Kosha Dills, and many more. He's done gigs for AC Milan and Puma, and he's done shows nationwide, LA, New York, Philly, Chicago, Boston, Miami. So I want to give a warm, warm welcome to our first ever guest on the show, Mr. DJ Marky Dark. Woo! How you doing, my man? Thank you so much for having me, Eden. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. How was the drive here? Rainy. Rainy. So, it's yeah, wet outside. It's, it's raining cats and dogs. Right it is now. horrible. Like, if you don't know how this works on this show, pretty much uh, the week leading into every episode, I'm trying to like get viewers to like submit questions for the guests so they can answer them. And I just want the people to get to know what they want to know about my man right here. So I got all the questions. I got all the questions right here from all the first viewer submissions. And I appreciate each and every single one of you. And we're just going to get right into it. So the official sheet, the official sheet, you already know the vibe. So the way it's going to work on the show is the first question always comes from me, and that's, how's it going, my man? I mean, just in general, life is so good right now. Like, I think just because of, like, how I've been, you know, music-wise and even not music-wise, like, I'm just content with where I'm at in life. Also, I'm starting audio engineering school next month, so that's, like, going to take a huge step for my career, like, going forward. That goes crazy. Where? Uh, in the city. In the city? By Union Square. That's awesome, bro. Good for you. Yeah. That's amazing. So yeah, you're starting school. Like, how, how long does audio engineering school go? It's a year-long program. Year-long. And then after that, like, you're... After that, they uh, help set you up with a job or an internship somewhere. So that's, like, the big benefit because they want to get you into the workforce, like, as soon as possible. Yeah, that's fire. <laughs> that's amazing. A few questions are pretty much, like, asking about your come-up slash how you do it, how you did do it. You know, things like that. So Angie from Brooklyn actually wants to know what inspired you to DJ in the first place? There's like so many factors. I'm going to give kind of like, you know, why why I started and then kind of just how everything happened. So mm -hmm. I think at the start, I was listening to a lot of like Skrillex and Dead Mouse when I was in like sixth grade. And from that, I was looking more into like you know, dance music in general, how, like, the whole come-up of that genre was. I was just listening to just a bunch of random stuff and come to find out that this stuff is already being played, like, on the radio a little bit. They're showing, like, signs that it's becoming bigger. And through that, I'm like, okay, yeah, this could be cool. Especially because, like, I've been involved with music all my life. Like, I've been playing... I've been playing Darbuka since I was a kid, guitar, drums, like... I love I love music in general. And then I would say after school on a Friday, I went over to a friend's house and my friend's brother at the time was DJing. He's not doing anything like crazy. It was just like smachot and like bar mitzvahs. For wedding. those who don't know, smachot means uh, happiness. Uh, it's pretty much kind of like parties and whatnot, things like that. Yeah. Just so, making sure for the people back home. <laughs> for the people back home. And uh, yeah, so he would just be doing like a bunch of bar mitzvahs, weddings, engagements, and he would he was teaching me how to DJ. My friend's brother was teaching me how to DJ, so shout out Charlie. And then also I had a family friend named Sammy Sabag who when I told him I wanted to take it seriously, he like kinda helped me out and hold my skills a little bit, get like kind of the entry level stuff out the way. So shout out Sammy for that too. That's what's up. So it's like what like when when did this start? This was also like in middle school or I would like yeah, in middle school. Or like what what age would you say? 11, 12. So you've been doing this since 11. Bro, for time. That's crazy. For time. I guess starting from such a such a young age, it's like, yeah, you can grasp the skills and all like all that stuff, stuff like that. But, I mean, a lot of people want to know, especially uh, Kelsey and Aton from LA, shout out to them. Um, they both kind of want to know, like, how exactly you broke out in the industry. Like, where's a good place to start? Because, like, it can be, like, so intimidating, you know, like, the industry as a whole. I mean, yeah. How I broke out is kind of a weird story. I was, I think, 14, and I wanted to take, you know, kind of take 
the club route as fast as I could. And at the time, there was this uh, company called No Idea Events. They're not in business anymore. They don't mm. do it anymore. But basically, they would host, like, these teen rager nights for, like, kids 14 to 17 in high school. And there was one event where Caked Up was headlining. At the time, they were, like, one of the biggest EDM groups, I think, ever. And I got a chance to open for them, which was dope as hell. How'd you get that? Um, It was through a friend, actually. He kind of emailed them my EPK. Like, I made myself a little EPK when I was uh, 14 years old. And it sucked. It, it was horrible, but... You know, I sent it out, and it got to the right people. I ended up opening for Caked Up, which was super dope. And then a few months after, I got to open up for Bass Jackers, who are honestly, like, a huge inspiration to me. And that was so sick as well. Like, through those, like, little No ID events, I really was like, yeah, this is what I want to do for, like, the rest of my life. Wow. And now you're doing gigs for AC Milan and Puma Bro. and things like that. That's insane, bro. Like, AC Milan was a was a fun one. It was fun. Like, like, what was it like doing that? I remember, like, I remember when I was in the Puma store, they were, they hired a stylist for me before this before the store opened, and I was like, wait, what are you? I'm getting, I got a whole stylist right now. Like, <laughs> um, shout out Robin Cruz. She's the head of marketing for Puma. She shout sorted, out Robin she, she sorted out that whole thing. And I love Robin so much just because she treated me like her little son when I was, like, in the store shopping and, like, looking for stuff to wear while I was DJing. It was so sick. That's tight. That's so tight. So it's, like, I mean, I guess, like, after seeing all that, like, people kind of want to know, especially Miriam from L.A., uh, how did you network to get these type of gigs? Like, because it's, like, they're, like, big, you know? You want to you want to hear something really funny? Talk I am about. horrible at networking, bro. Like I <laughs> I have anxiety, so yeah. I tend to like choke up at a lot of stuff and if as, asking the right people for stuff is like the hardest thing for me. I I right. hate going up to people and being like, "Oh, yeah, if there's any opportunities for me, like can you, you know, please like keep me tapped in, keep me in the loop." And it's it's so hard for me to ask that. I just did that to you. I feel like, like I feel like so many people deal with that today, too. Because it's like, I mean, it's like, I know I'm like that also. It's like, it's hard for me to ask for help, you know? Like, I feel like a lot of people deal with that type of thing. So it's like, I feel like people are just wondering, like, how, like, you were able to, like, find your way to, like, things like this, you know? Where it's like, I mean. Most of it comes from, like, just people who I'm with or people who I meet at, like, shows. A lot of the gigs I've been doing recently come from people that I met at shows. Like... A lot of the Never Come Home stuff, that whole thing started because I met someone at a Jaden Smith concert. I went to see Jaden Smith, like, right before COVID. He was on tour. And one kid I met, his name is Samaj. We met that night. We were just talking and whatever. And through, like, COVID 2020, we were on, like, Zoom calls and, like, FaceTime all the time. Just talking about, like, oh, what's next for, like, us and... Now we're at the stage where Samaj is doing crazy things, like with the whole Never Come Home brand that him, him, Emmy, and Jose have, and just, like, amazing things. And through them, I've been able to do so many, like, big, big things, out-of-the-box things. I'm not going to say weird. It's definitely, like, DJing at a coffee shop is definitely out-of-the-box. It's yeah. not weird, but... <laughs> That's pretty new. <laughs> I thought it was... Kinda wild. That was an experience, but... <laughs> Also, like, the whole AC Milan thing, that came about from literally watching games with people in the city. And, like, those people, like, would connect you to, like, these type of things? So, one of the, one of the you know, head members of the board, Franco Zagari, from AC Milan NYC, shout out Franco, he basically, you know, facilitated the whole gig. I didn't know it was going to happen. He basically calls me one Monday, and he's like, Yo, so basically, Puma's looking for a DJ for the for the Champions League semifinal event they're doing on Wednesday. And I told them, you might be available. Can I connect you with uh, Robin Cruz? I'm like, absolutely connect me with Robin Cruz. What do you mean? <laughs> and from then on, five minutes later, got a call from Robin, and the rest is history. <laughs> ah, that's insane. This is it. I'm happy you got it. Bro. Listen, bro, like, I, I, I remember, like, posting on Instagram, like, that big uh, 
that like big post that I made. Oh my bro, the sigh that I left out just like what you know the meme of LeBron holding his forehead yeah. like bro, that was me. It's like you prayed for times like this, pretty much. And I'm I'm happy for you. I'm happy you got that. Because I know how much AC Milan means to you too, like as like a team. Bro, they've been my favorite team yeah. since I was a baby. My father grew up watching them and he my dad only watches soccer. So the only thing I could ever watch like growing up was them. But when I was like a younger kid, they were doing so well. And then the fall off happened when I was a teenager. So I'm like, the hell, man. <laughs> it's still like crazy that you got to like perform for them, though. Like, I mean, like it was like a, it was like them. Like you performed for AC Milan. And the crazy thing is I might be able to do it again, too. You might be able to do it again. I might be able to do it again. That's like what's insane to me. Have you been in like talks with them right now or? Not talks. It's just like they said if anything ever comes up again, like of that magnitude. It's definitely going to happen again. So that means you did a good job. Yeah. I'd hope so. Good stuff, bro. I got it. <laughs> That's awesome. Is there any, like, other work that you do, like, other than DJing? Or is DJing, like, your whole life right now? I got, like, three things I do daily. I ha I work for my dad. So Word. many people know, like, the what money I'm... What does dad do? He's in wholesale cigarettes. Word. He's been yeah. doing it since I was... Since, like, before I was even born. And, you know... All the money I make from my dad, I basically tend to reinvest in, like, my music and, like, just doing a bunch of other things. I currently intern as an A&R for uh, AG Presents, the concert company. Word. So they basically just, uh, they just posted that they're doing uh, Cardi's tour, Cardi's upcoming really? tour. And you're going to be, like, involved with that? Cause, like, the, hopefully. Hopefully. I'd absolutely love to if I can. <laughs> um, Did you see that whole Cardi thing with Nardwar, though? Yeah, bro. Listen. Never about? disrespect Nardwar. You can't disrespect Nardwar. I love that man. Oh, man. But that's, that's besides the point. Yeah. Besides I remember even getting that text from my friend Ron. Like, he's kind of high up in the AG ranks. And he's one of the nicest guys ever. Lives in Los Angeles. He texts me like, yo, I'm not tapped in with rap at all. Like, I need help and a lot of it. I can't really, like, pay you, but what I can do is offer you free concert tickets to any show you want to go to. Just keep me, like, in the loop with all the shows. And what I basically need you to do is every week I have this Google, uh, I have this Google spreadsheet that I need you to fill out with just a bunch of, like, rappers coming up that are – not really doing like big shows or not really on the scale that you think they should be and just send them my way. So I kind of told him about homicide gang, getting them on their own, uh, Word. getting I, them on their solo tour. They're which was really super good hype. too. Also, there's a, a certain guy in the works, a YouTuber that I may or may not listen to that I pushed to him and he wants to really hop on a YouTuber. It's like, a... that's insane. Yeah, bro. That's unreal. We can't, we can't disclose this information because it's a, uh, it's definitely private. Probably signed an NDA or something. Like I did that. sign an NDA. We, 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 we're, we're not going to talk about it, but this YouTuber is nuts. He's actually insane. Bro, that's so I, I pushed it to him and he's like, yeah, but I recently spoke to his manager. They want to do something over in the U S I'm like, okay, you see, that's this is unreal. a perfect idea. <laughs> Considering that you, like, balance, like, a bunch of, like, this different stuff, like, with the DJing, you know, um, Erica from New York, and probably other people, but she submitted this question, uh, she wants to know how exactly you manage, like, a DJ lifestyle in terms of, like, work-life balance. Like, how do you, like, balance everything? Well, I mean, technically speaking, DJing is my life, and my work is my work, so right. I work for my dad Tuesdays and Fridays, and then Monday... Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I have a I have another job where I teach kids how to make music, but that's from 9 to 3. So right. after that, normally go to help my dad, I'm normally doing stuff for my internship, and I'll take that all before my gigs, make sure to get it out the way by at least 5, so by 6 I can, like, start my prep. Right. And then sometimes I have to rush prep, which is a terrible thing to do, but sometimes I have to just because of work and I get it figured out sometimes I don't even prep at all and I just wing my sets like that's another thing and how do those go uh your birthday was one of them 
<laughs> yeah, for, actually, for the people who don't know, um, about I think it was last year. Last last February. Yeah, last February it was um me and a really good friend of mine. Shout out Yoel Halbert. We share the same birthday, February eleventh, and pretty much, uh, we rented out this bar, and. We got Mikey to DJ for us at that very bar. So now he's telling me he was just like winging that whole set. I winged that. Like, whole... It was one of the craziest sets I've ever seen him. Like he did an amazing job at this party. So I didn't even believe you winged it. I thought there was like prepped and everything. Nah, bro. The only things I prepped was when you and Johnny like decided to do a little performance. Like that was oh all I had gosh. to. That was all I had to work with. Otherwise, yeah, like, but nah, that's also such a bar. You said in the beginning though, like work is work, DJing is life. That's such a bar, bro. That's awesome. I'll make it that my Instagram bio. Oh my god! You should make that a bio. Socrates. <laughs> Socrates. <laughs> Socrates. Um, I think a bunch of other people kind of have like random opinions and thoughts they want you to talk about. So run them by me. Yeah, we can start from Betty from Los Angeles. Shout out to her. Uh, how's your hearing? My hearing's solid. My mom would say it's declined. <laughs> uh, cause I can't hear her when she calls me to do chores, even though she screams like 900 <laughs> times when I'm still on my way down to go get it done. But, but it, <laughs> isn't that every classic Israeli mom though? Yeah. In a way. Sure. <laughs> yeah, my mom's the same exact way. In a way. But yeah, like she would say it's depleted. I don't think it's depleted, but I feel like my musical ear in general has gotten like way better since, uh, since i started but hearing's fine gotcha so it's like you're hearing like one could debate kind of decline slash okay but you're listening i always That's listen i always listen That's fine. bucks bucks of plenty wants to know uh like what's your opinion on pink tape the new uzi album that came out um very unpopular to the casual listener i love yeah. that album uh i feel like that's uzi's um testing or like Yeezus in a type of way because he was really was going really with, experimental he was going with just everything yeah. like he sampled people don't know how big of a fan he i am of w Nakamura theme. yeah bro people WWE. don't know how big of a wwe fan i am so when i heard that i was like yo he did not just i no, i did not sense. just hear this on a Lil uzi vert song also um fire alarm i obviously you know how big of an edm fan i am justice is like one of the craziest like dance music groups i think in the history of the genre so hearing stress sampled on an uzi album i was like oh my god yo he's doing everything he took a classic house track and turned it into one of the hardest beats of 2023 i mean i know it wasn't him it was his producer but still crazy still one of the most insane things i heard i i give pink tape an 8 out of 10 just because i feel like there's much more to be desired with some of the songs but mm -hmm. it was definitely is definitely like up there with like best albums of this year for sure. What would you say? What would you say was your top three though? My top three like this year for rap albums, albums in general, whatever you like. Ooh, okay. So I have Lil Yachty first. That was a good album. Bro. So good, and I listen to it every day. My second is definitely Pink Tape, just for now at least, and then third is a uh, Sunburn Dominic Fike's album. I it's really because of Samaj I listen to so much Dominic Fike but that album it was the first actual like Dominic Fike album that I listened to in full I was like yeah this is this is something amazing and, and is Dominic Fike like like what what does he do he's rap dance like what, it's what weird he's like, like an alternative artist makes like alternative and like indie music but he's tapped in with like the rap scene one of his biggest hits is produced by Kenny Beats it's called Phone Numbers and it really like Kenny Beats is so good. Kenny Beats is so good. I know did you watch the cave. Really, did, I know you watch the cave. I love the cave. The, the, <laughs> the Denzel Curry episode is stuck in my head. Denzel Curry, Zach Fox, IDK, Kenny Mason, yeah. all those episodes are amazing. Wait, but didn't didn't like uh didn't Kenny release an album this year also? Did Kenny Beats re I never even checked. I think he might have, but it might have like, been just the, like a producer album. Yeah, it was something like that. I mean, like he kind of just like put out like this album i don't know if it's something i like oh just discovered now and i was like late to it or like he recently released it but like it's basically just like a bunch of beats like lined up like it was well, very under the radar i might give that a listen on the way yeah, to definitely new check jersey that out. It's definitely a vibe. It's a vibe you know speaking of like music taste and like what you like um ben from miami actually asked um what's your top three favorite songs 
to play in a function specifically? I want to give this like a three part answer just because like I'll play a bunch of different types of functions. So if I'm playing like more like the chill or like, you know, chill or like vibe, vibey crowd type of like thing, I'm more down like the tech house route, deep house. So I top three songs would be my first would be the Castion remix of uh, Maria by Ricky Martin. It's probably one of my favorite songs to play in sets. I dropped it last night when I DJed on the beach. And I thought <laughs> Wait, it was perfect. You on a beach? I did it on a beach last night. What was that for? Uh, Just like some little function that was hosted. That's I incredible. thought it was cool. I thought it was cool. I got invited literally two days before. You're so just I was, everywhere. I am everywhere. You're just everywhere. I am everywhere. <laughs> but insane. listen, what what can I do about it? So yeah, that, uh, The Shake by Ellis Moss, that's like one of the craziest, like, vibey tracks i ever heard in my life and then also um the tim hawks remix of escapism by ray that's like another great one that i like playing for like vibey stuff if i'm playing more like a techno crowd um that's like my main genre what i'm producing now as well so i would say flatline by hardwell and ollie james um something by trey pierce and then my unreleased I have as like a top three that I play at a bunch of techno functions. And then if I'm playing like strict strict rap functions, my top three would be Family Ties number one. I feel like Fair enough. a lot of people know that. Um, I remember like the first week that came out, I was DJing at Yoel's house. And Yoel like Halbert? Yeah. That, that was the person we shared a birthday party with. But like, really? Yeah, I was DJing at Yoel's crib. And I remember you came up to me like, yo, is this that new Keeman Kendrick? I don't like it so much. And I'm like, no, nah, you're crazy. <laughs> you're crazy. There's no way. It, it, it definitely very much grew on me. Because now when I hear the trumpets, I'm, I'm running. I'm you running. texted me a month later that I converted you. I was like. You did put me on a little. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you see me. <laughs> He did put me on a little. Man does conversion therapy. If you have a song <laughs> that you hate song. and everyone else likes, I will convert you. <laughs> but that's crazy. Nah, like Family Ties number one. I would say number two is All Right by Kendrick. That song always goes off at parties, even though it's not like that type of song at all. If you really like deep the lyrics and understand it, it's, it's not. A, it's that, a whole other message completely. It's a whole other message, but it goes off. Yeah. <laughs> and then. I would say the third song is uh, LPFJ2 by ASAP Rocky. That's a good song. Pro. That's a good song. The dam- Loki deep cut. But- the damage it does in New York, like in New York in general. Yeah. It is so, like, good. And when you hear, like, that, everyone, like, loses their yeah. shit. I'm gonna keep it, but <laughs> I've been clean this whole time. I've been doing a good job. I was like, you don't, you don't, you don't mess with, uh, you don't mess with Meek Mill so much. I do, but the thing is, I feel like Dreams and Nightmares has become so like overplayed in a way. <sighs> really? Like I love Meek Mill. Don't get me wrong. His older music, like Monster, um, r- bro, what's what's Rico, that one album Rico here with Drake? Rico, what's that song he did with Tory Lanez? Liddy, I love that song Liddy. so much. Liddy was one of my that favorite, album, favorite rap songs. Like ever. That album, when it came out, I was like in high school, and it was one of my favorite albums of that year. That The one with the orange cover. Yeah. What a, I forgot the name of it, but bro. It was a great album. It was Hon- good. That was one of my first like ever like favorite rap albums. Like Liddy was one of my first ever favorite songs. So it's like, Liddy was such a good song, bro. Like that, the, like, that's the whole thing. It's like it maybe like a bias thing. I don't know. But it's like, I mean, when it comes to like function specifically, I see Meek Mill as the GOAT. I don't know. It's I like see- him and Chief Keep. I feel like it doesn't really, like, translate. It depends on, like, where you're performing, obviously. That is true. I feel like it wouldn't really translate well. So That's it's right. like, what would you say is your top three at a bar mitzvah? At a bar mitzvah. Like, top top three, like, songs that you've seen, like, effectively, like, make everyone just go insane. Surprisingly, Mo Bamba. Definitely number one. Mo Bamba will definitely do <laughs> that. Jewish kids oh, love Mo Bamba. They love Mo Bamba. I played, uh, I played BLP Kosher at a bar mitzvah, actually. How'd that go? It, it was pretty funny. The kids knew it. The parents weren't too happy. You you heard you heard he um th- he like refuses to perform on Shabbat. Bro, listen, bro's doing a Sandy Koufax. So I respect bro, it. Bro, it's, it's remember his late. Brooklyn show was on a Saturday night instead of a Friday night. So yeah, like he came to LA at one point and like he like made it like a point that it's like he's not performing like Friday night. 
And everyone was just like, what it's out of keeping Chavez. I mean, it's like we've been talking about like all this music that's like been around like for a while, but like there's been like this new wave of like just AI music just being pushed out. Would you ever use that in a set? Like any of those types of songs? Can I answer you honestly? Give me honestly. I got no idea. <laughs> I have no clue. No idea. Cause listen, I I feel like there's so many good like AI songs out there. Obviously there's that viral one with uh, Drake on that piano yeah, beat. The, the winter's colder. Bro, whatever it's called. It's just like if I also soon enough the artist could just be using AI and we won't even know it. Like it's so scary. Bro, it's so scary how like how into the future we are with all this stuff, but I'm not against it. I'm not necessarily like, oh, AI music is garbage. No, I can't say that. No, like the thing is it's like it's good and that's why I'm scared of it. Cuz it's like I mean there's it's so It's scarily many, accurate. Like, there's so many like artists that are like on the come up slash like have really low monthly listeners right now and it's like they're so good like i've been listening to this guy for like a year now his name is grave 3x i highly suggest looking him up on spotify he's really great i really love his music he like kind of does the whole like hype <laughs> trap type thing like slat he, he's like a really hype artist and like i really really like his stuff but like he only averages like a few th- tens of thousands like monthly listeners and what he's producing like ai stuff nah he produces like his own beats he makes his own music and everything but it's like you just put ai drake or ai travis scott and that's gonna get like two million views while this dude's averaging like tens of thousands listen it's it's scary if it ever ends up ruining the music industry then i feel like there's a problem with it but right now like it's kind of in its own lane like no one's monetizing it because realistically you can't that is true. I mean, they've been cracking down on it heavy. Yeah, bro. Okay. You can't you can't monetize it. Like that's the whole thing. It's cool if you're doing it for fun. Like obviously, I'm not gonna knock it. But if we have an issue where AI is basically just like taking over the music scene, then there's a problem because yeah. we just lose out, and then all the shows are gonna end up being like I don't know if you know like what vo- Vocaloids are. It's like this Japanese type of thing. I don't know if you ever heard Hatsune Miku. Or... Oh, is it that is it that hologram thing? Yeah, bro. Like, they, that's like... That feel like Michael Jackson and like Tupac, the hologram concerts. I'm not talking about hologram concerts. I'm talking about like basically they have these like anime characters that make music in Japan and it would... Oh, wow. I was like, this, is, this isn't really a foreign concept if you like knew about Vocaloids or like what they were and you, you would pay to go to Vocaloid shows and it would just be like videos of a screen of them like just singing the songs and i'm like that's weird people are investing in this but now that the whole ai thing is like out and about i'm like listen it's not really it's not really like a new concept at all it's just like you know the concept here is like now they're finally cracking on how to get like american rapper voices onto like their own custom beats i'm not against it though it's just you can't monetize it yeah I mean, you can't monetize it for now. Like, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. You never know. <laughs> Mo- moving on from, like, music in general and kind of getting back to, like, the whole DJ DJ part of DJ Mikey, you know? Uh, Daniel from L.A. actually wants to ask, if you could DJ battle against any DJ, who would you choose? I know I'd lose, but a track just because I want to show that, like, I'm... Um you know, up there in, like, my skills and, like, know what I'm doing. That's what's up. A-Track is regarded as, like, the best, like, technical DJ of all time. Like, he's one of the best at scratching, one of the best at just, like, skills in general. He's won, like, tons of competitions. And also, he, his own music is fire. He makes music with uh, Armin Van Helden, part of a group called Duck Sauce. Makes music with his brother, who is part of Chromio. His name is Dave One, fire artist. I've seen them live before together. So sick. That's unreal. That's the, like, I mean, who would you say is your goat, though? Hardwell. Everyone knows it's Hardwell. Hardwell. That's true. <laughs> he, he spams Hardwell on Instagram. Every day. Time. Every day. He loves that guy. He's really good, though. I really I really mess with Hardwell. But is like, it offensive if I say DJ Khaled is my goat? No. But also... I feel like people get offended by that. He's just not a DJ. <laughs> he is. I mean... It's like, I feel like everyone gets distracted from, like, the shenanigans he pulls online. Like, oh, bring out the whole ocean. But like, No, not I mean, even that. He had a set at EDC in 2017, and he wasn't even DJing. Someone else was DJing for him, and he was just on the mic, like, performing 
music that he he's like has his name on it to type right. shit. I don't know. It was just a disaster. It's like, also like I've seen like videos of like, I, I mean, this is probably like earlier in his career or like back in the day, but like I've seen videos where like he's been on stage and stuff and he's been like scratching and like he was like, it's probably really old as hell because right now he's not even like yeah, doing that I mean, much. He, he's basically on retirement, I feel. He's doing like music exec stuff. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. But I mean like, hey, props to him. I mean, if he got there, he got there. You know. And he's still got a number two album behind Tyler. Like, that yeah, number two though. Uh. Uh, yeah, because it's Tyler. Yeah. Call me if you get lost. This is like the best was, album that really, year. It was really good. Honestly, I liked Igor more. I did like Igor more. I liked Igor more, but, but it, it was still a really good album though. Hey, they both won Grammys. Listen, yeah, what? that's true. That's kind of like the last like random opinion slash like thoughts of DJ Mikey uh, type question is. Shayna from Los Angeles actually wants to know, do you perform sober? Always. Never drink on the job. I treat really? it like I treat it like a profession. I treat DJing like a profession, you're, you're even though it's not. sober every time. Always. Not not even like a shot for confidence. Always. Never a shot. Props to you, my man. Listen, he keeps it kosher. Even, bro, I remember um, when when we did your birthday, Yolo was offering me mad drinks, bro. <laughs> It was like a scary amount too. Like he would always come up to me, like, "Bro, you ready now? You ready now to drink?" I'm like, "No, bro, just keep that shit away from me. I'm good." It's like, did you end up drinking like after the set? No, I I, I won't even drink after oh, wait, because yeah, you drove. I drive. Yeah, no, no I drive no everywhere. People don't know that I drive to all my gigs because it's more convenient. And why would I want to carry my DJ stuff on the subway? Like, yeah, no, it's just bad. irresponsible. Like, it could get stolen from me. I don't want that. I'm carrying around expensive equipment, heavy equipment, too. That also, if I have to load up in an Uber, just won't happen. Yeah, my whole energy, 10 times out of 10, is just me, like, going off the energy of the music. Like, I don't need substances to party. I don't need intoxicants to party. I'm just me. I do it for the love of the music. Like, people think, oh, DJs want to just DJ because it's like money or they want an excuse to drink more like do substances more no never that for me like you do it because you're passionate about i do it because i'm passionate about it i would never if i wanted to take substances i wanted to like drink all the time i would go to clubs i wouldn't want to dj at them i wouldn't aspire to be behind the decks at anywhere if i wanted to just like have an excuse to party and live my life that way after all those i think we got a few questions like kind of people Asking you to like reminisce or like you know what's coming up, what what you went through, Let's things do like it. that. So first off, Emily from Los Angeles, shout out to her. That's actually my sister. So <laughs> shout out to Emily, love ya. Um, she wants to know if you could share a memorable experience or gig that stands out in your DJ career. I got so, a few, bro. So yeah, pretty much what I want to ask like, is, what was your craziest experience, and what was your best experience? I got a few gigs where I could say I had, like, crazy or best experiences. Tell me about it. AC Milan's definitely one of them, bro. Like, I feel like we can all stop beating that dead horse. But AC Milan is definitely one of, like, I think the craziest things I've done. I mean, the horse isn't even necessarily dead yet. I mean. It's not even dead. They might even hit you back. They might hit me back. But listen, I still think that was one of the craziest things I ever did. Just because it was, like, on such short notice, too. I got the call two days before it happened really bro i got the call two days before that's unreal and then uh you know being in the puma store i got to meet like just a bunch of people bro i had a bunch of people coming in just to watch me and then they just dipped out like they didn't even stay in like shop and the whole thing was to stay in like shop and get like exclusive merch that they only had there on the day right bro it was so cool also um the coffee shop was definitely one that i like a lot um that was definitely like we had that plan for months and we were just like thinking oh what's it gonna be like what's the vibe we're trying to set this that, and the third and you know we had just a bunch of like small businesses from jersey city like selling their products that went well for them right. we had me djing you know my friends they were just like putting on a good event facilitating it make sure it was good in general and we just had a lot of fun, bro. We were like, we went crazy to family ties in a coffee shop. That was definitely like <laughs> top moments of life. 
I thought it was. Oh, just, I saw like, that video, like, bro. It was like, so funny. It was of like I think it was like Brian T, like something like that. Yeah, to Brian's like, flair. I, I, I checked. I checked out his story, like when he like commented, uh, like he was talking about like the coffee shop or something like that, and like he put it on his story, and like I saw that video, like that's insane. so funny, bro. Like literally just dudes like so standing funny. from the street, like outside, and there's just this like tiny little peaceful window to a coffee shop, and it's just like twenty people just like going off like for do, family do, time, do. Like, just jumping around. <laughs> It was crazy. Oh, but it's definitely one of like the more fun moments I've had while DJing. Absolutely. Also, oh, another gig I could say that I like really thought was insane and just like fun in general was um Shake the World, the one that I did in January. Um, based, what was that like? It was my first time doing like a proper underground function, which I never really experienced before. Right. So, obviously, you know, that's, like, another Never Come Home thing. Samaj, obviously, like, making sure I was on that lineup. It's always, like, a lot of my opportunities nowadays are coming from, like, Samaj and all of them. But I am absolutely grateful for it. Like, they're amazing. I love what they're doing. Love what they're pushing. And, like, I just remember walking in. I started off with no people. And as the party went on, just got better and better and better and better. After my set, I would say we sold out the event. It was like, what, 150 tickets? I would say after I was done, 70 people gone out of the building. Didn't see anyone later on in the night. That's a flex. I was, and they were chanting my name after my set. I'm like, yeah, this is my him moment. I think this is <laughs> this is my him moment for sure. Like, I never felt the type of way like this after a gig. That's Tears funny. of joy, bro. I'm hitting stuff I'm not supposed to be hitting. It, it was cool. Uh, Maddie wants to know if you faced any barriers in your career due to the cultural identity and religion. Because, like, you know, we're both Jewish, like, Middle Eastern Jews and stuff like that. So, yeah. like, has that ever affected you? Not negatively. But I would say there, it's definitely, like, hard to keep up because I do want to, like, I can't f say I'm fully on the derech, obviously. Like, that's definitely, like, a no. But I'm definitely trying to keep to, like, my traditions and my culture as much as I can. Like, I put on Tefillin every morning. But Friday nights, like, I realize it's impossible to be a DJ in New York and you can't work Fridays. Like, you cannot do a BLP. I can't be BLP kosher. Like, it is impossible. So if I ever get hired for something on a Friday night, I will always always do shabbat dinner first i will always make sure to be there with my family first for shabbat go to shul with my dad do kiddush and hamotzi and i'll enjoy the meal with my family and as soon as you know things start to like wind down i'll be out and on my way to a gig and honestly it's like have you ever like considered like you know because i mean obviously i know like it, it it could be like a lot of pressure like right now to keep shabbat and things like that and I know it could be difficult, especially in, like, this generation, like, in regards to, like, gigs and all that stuff. But have you ever, like, considered, like, maybe, like, once you get bigger and you're, like, able to have, like, more control, like, over, like, the gigs, like, you can choose and stuff like that? Oh, no, absolutely. Shabbat and, Shabbat? Shabbat and holidays are, like, going to be non-negotiable at that point. I already keep holidays as it is, but with Shabbat, like, it's just much harder, especially because it's every week. Like, holidays, you can sort of be, like... Oh, yeah, sorry, I can't, like, because I have this holiday. Sorry, I can't because I have that holiday. But with Shabbat, it's every week. Like, we don't just have a choice on Shabbat. It is every single week of the year. And so if I ever do end up getting more control, obviously I'm going to be able to, when I'm able to put my foot down, I'll put my foot down. Because I remember I was listening to Dave Grutman in an interview. He was talking about how he always, like, does Shabbat with his family before he ever does anything on Friday. And that guy is the literal king of Miami. Owns every club in every club in the city. Right. And, you know, he's like, he makes sure it's, like, important to, you know, be with his kids, be with his family, because you don't get that time in the week. It's true. I feel like a lot of, a lot of us do take Friday for granted. Like, really, at the end of the day, when you sit down at the table and you hear Kiddush, it's like, yeah, okay, I have a little bit of release. Like, I'm cool for now. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people in my law school, like, um, when they figure out, like, I'm an Orthodox Jew, like, they all ask me about, like, Shabbat, and they're just like, so, like, from Friday night to Saturday night, you can't touch electric at all? And I'm like, nah, I can't do it. And they're like, 
how do you do that? And I was like, I don't know. I just spend time with my family, you know, like eat stuff like that. And they're just like, wow. Like, like, like so I've heard some people say like, wow, I never get that time with my family. You know, like that's awesome. And I'm like, yeah, like, it, like it's the one time a week I really so get to important. connect with my dad, bro. I never get to see him throughout right, the week. My, with me and my dad, it's the same way. Cause it's like, at, at least like growing up, it's like, he'd be like busy a lot, you know, like he, he, he was a hard worker. He was a really hard worker. When and I was then, growing like, up, Friday, I wouldn't see him. I wouldn't see him. I'd be asleep by the time he'd get home. Yeah, but come Shabbat, it's that best time. And, and it's like I'd, I'd walk with my dad to shul like every, for like every like, you know, like service, you know. That was quality time. Like I would not trade those walks for anything. That's why I love Shabbat and holidays so much. It's just because like, I, I definitely am family first. Like it definitely comes with the territory of just being like from the Middle East. Yeah. We're very like family oriented and like, you know, close knit. Yeah. So, man, hey, listen, I'm praying for you. I hope one day you can get to a level where it's like you're comfortable enough that, you know, you can get back to it. You know, you can get back to like the Shabbat and all that stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for you, bro. For real. I'm rooting for me too. Come on, bro. <laughs> I need that. Speaking of looking to the future, um, Brian actually wants to know what we can expect from you from the next year. If this is the same Brian that knows exactly what I'm doing in the future, <laughs> then we got to have a conversation. <laughs> Probably. Brian T. Brian, Brian's flair. Brian's my, flair, yeah. My that, brother. That's the one. <laughs> um, listen, he he knows exactly my moves in the future because we're hosting two events together in October. That's fine. I, I mean, but the people don't, though. So it's like, I mean, the people might as well tell them. I, I mean, tell them what you could tell. I mean, all I can say is October. That's, that's all I've been saying on Instagram. Literally, I don't know if you go into any of like, my recent posts. All the comments that me, Brian, and like our friend Daniel, we all just write October, October, October. What's in October? <laughs> it's good marketing. Listen, good the marketing. more people keep talking about October. Um, but you know what? I might just, rev I might just do a little bit more of a slip because um, October's Fashion Week. So one of the right. events we're doing is on Fashion Week. It's gonna be something related to fashion. So that's cool. It, 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 like a, like a streetwear type thing. Or I like... don't want to say much. <laughs> and then the week, oh, literally the week after, uh, we're doing something. We're doing something as well with the same people, and we have this like clear cut already. That second event is halfway like booked up. So the people who got the link to the RSVP know. Everyone else, they don't know. They'll know. They're lost in the sauce. They'll know October first. That's all I'm going to reveal for now. October first, we will be announcing both things. Very concrete. Hey, so be on the lookout. Make sure to be on the lookout. And yeah, I mean, I guess before I let you go, the last question is also always me, and that's um, if there's one piece of advice that you can leave to people watching. What would that be? All right. So, I know Walt Disney was not popular among um, us folk <laughs> over here, but there's one thing that sticks with me that he did say. Um, it's, if you can dream it, you can do it. Mm. Don't ever let anything in your head stop you from, like, just going on and completing, what like, your passion. If anything is a dream, don't let it be a dream. Work towards it. It, you, nothing you can do is there's no such thing as a limitation in this world if money's the limitation put it in your head that money's not a factor mm. always think in your head if money's not a factor what would i do and then if it gets to that point where money does become a factor start thinking of like you know cost efficient ways to do it or like if you have a bit more like how you want to do it the best way possible nothing can stop you from being your best and whatever you have to do to be your best, do. That's what's up. Because if you can dream it, you can do it, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you all for watching. Mikey, thank you one more time for being on Absolutely, the show. Absolutely, bro. Thank you so much for tons. having me. If you like this episode, make sure to like and subscribe on the YouTube. If you want to ask questions for the next episode, make sure to follow all the socials. All the links are going to be below. Mikey's links to all his socials are also going to be like down in the bio. So if you want to check him out, which I highly suggest you do, make sure to look at those links. And one more time, this has been Mikey Darwish. This has been Ed in Toronto, and this has been the You Ask Me podcast. See you next week. Yup!